Kenneth Keniston says about contemporary young people growing up in a town like this, it's the generation of the uncommitted. That's why this is necessary. We have a responsibility to take a generation of young men and women and nurture them into commitments. That's why our marriages don't work. Marriages don't work because of lack of commitment. We think romance is going to make it happen. You know, you, you meet this person and the chemistry is right and you get all turned on. It's romantic and it's wonderful and it's exciting. Nothing against romance. It gets you married. It just doesn't keep you married. You got to get beyond romance. There's got to be commitment. Eric Fromm and Scott Peck, all of them say the same thing as they analyze relationships. Relationships are built on commitments, commitments, commitments. I had a television show out of New York for about four years, several years ago. And, you know, they always have these authors that are writing books and they come through and you get a free guest. And this one woman had this book, Creative Divorce. It didn't go well. <laughs> and at a particular point she started yelling at me and saying, you don't expect me to stay married for the sake of my children, do you? And I said, yeah. I think that's a pretty good reason for staying married. You say, but what if romance isn't there? I say, you know, wait six months. It'll come back. Romance is an on again, off again thing. I grew up romantic. I'm Baptist. You don't have to be Baptist to go to heaven, amen? <laughs> but why take a chance? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> and in our Sunday school, as a kid growing up, we sang this little song. Be careful, little hands, what you do. Be careful, little hands, what you... How many know this song? Oh, they sing it here. God is up above. He is looking down in love. So be careful, little hands. That song ruined my dating life. <laughs> I, I, I'd be in the car, and I'm ready to make the move on the girl, and I'd hear this voice from heaven saying... Be careful, little hands, what you do. So the day I got married, I was hot to try. I was hot to try. I was romantic. Love is much deeper than romance. Romance is off again and on again. Oh, I know what you're going to say. What if you meet the right one? There's the great American myth, the right one. And you ask your mother, Mom, how will I know when I meet the right one? And every mother in America answers the same way. When you meet the right one, that really clarifies everything, doesn't it? <laughs> You'll know. And it doesn't end there, people. Three weeks before the wedding, she says, are you? It's too late. The invitations are out. The presents are coming in. You're dead me. I don't know what it's like to come down the aisle. I know what it's like to be up front. Everybody you ever knew is out there. You look up the aisle, this woman dressed in white is coming at you. And on this occasion, you hardly recognize her. And she's wearing this demonic grin on your fa her face. And you're saying, God, what am I doing here? And even if you are an agnostic at that moment, God will speak to you. You will hear a voice from heaven saying, too late, sucker. <laughs> it's over. And I always say to my students, no big deal. All that a wedding really does is creates the possibility for a marriage. Weddings do not create marriages. Only the possibility for marriages. Marriage is what you create when the romanticism wears off. You say, it'll never wear off. It'll wear off. You wake up one morning, you look across the bed. She's not awake. Her mouth is open. The hair's hanging down. Worse than that, she wakes up first and looks across the bed. And there is no hair hanging down. I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Do you know how to create love? Love is a very, very deep emotion. 
a spiritual thing that grows out of commitment. And we need to build families. We need to build young people. We've got to build children who have commitments. Philip Reef, perhaps the greatest social theorist of our time, said up until Sigmund Freud, all counseling was done by clergy persons, priests and ministers and immens. And the whole point of counseling was to keep the couple together, to nurture the commitment between the persons. After Freud, it all changed. And so much counseling aggrandizes the individual and diminishes commitment to others. As a matter of fact, if you go for counseling, you might find that the counselor actually ruins your marriage. I can just hear the counselor saying, look, we really would like your marriage to hold intact, but Mary, my primary concern is for you and for your happiness and your fulfillment and your aggrandizement and the actualization of your potentialities as a human being. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's dangerous. The truth of the matter is that the biblical model for marriage is not individualism. It's mutual submission. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives, which is an ultimate form of submission. Giving yourself to each other, each esteeming the other better than himself, says the scripture. Each putting the other person above himself or herself. Love is a commitment in which one is ready to sacrifice his or her individuality and self-actualization in order that the partner might become all that he or she should be. That's almost radical talk in today's society and our new you know, Freudian culture. No wonder uh, so many of the commentators call this the therapeutic society. We have forgotten the sense of commitment and all we want to do is nurture the individual. And you know what? As a sociologist, I gotta say, there's no society that has aggrandized individualism more than America and our marriages are falling apart. 40% of them go down the tubes. I mean, we're so into individualism. I got to tell you this. If it's all about personal happiness, your marriage is not going to last. Because in every marriage, there are times of unhappiness. And when I had my 50th anniversary, I, we were coming up to it. I said, gee, Peg, Saturday's our anniversary. She said, 48 years of happy married life. I said, we've been married 50 years. She said, 48 years of happy married life. <laughs> And then she added, that's not bad, 48 out of 50. The minute we run into unhappiness, we're out of it. We, we're just not happy. Whoa, whoa, when does self-sacrifice for the other in the nature of commitment come into play? Love is when you are willing to sacrifice personal aggrandizement for the sake of the other. It's biblically grounded in the Hebraic tradition. It's biblically grounded in the uh, Islamic tradition and in the Christian tradition. There it is. It's, it's mutual sacrifice.